What up, Internet? I'm Harley Mornstein. You might recognize me from your dreams. A name can be the make or break difference in any product success. And putting out a car is a massive investment for a manufacturer. So how is it that a company can put hundreds of millions of dollars, years of time, and thousands of brains together to release a car, and then sometimes ruin it by putting the absolute dumbest names on them? On this episode of Car and Driver Rundown, we will tell you what we think in the history of automobiles, what some of the dumbest car names are. Now, a lot of cars use letters and numbers in their names, and that's fine. It usually means something. In the case of the Cadillac ETC, it stands for El Dorado Touring Coupe, which is cool. But did anyone stop and think that when you name your car after the abbreviation of etc., you're actually saying this car is an afterthought? Did that cross anyone's mind? You might as well name it the Cadillac Yada Yada or the Cadillac whatever. I hope someone got fired for naming it that. A, a dumb name. No question, the Cadillac ETC did not in any way deserve the Eldorado name, which was a once proud name. Cadillac took their high-end coupe and called it the etc. Like, eh, here's the Cadillac whatnot. ETC, that's code for Eldorado Turing Coupe. That's code for a bad idea. The Germans especially were using numbers and letters. So Cadillac tried this sort of abbreviation. Never mind Cadillac had some of the most evocative names ever. Eldorado, Biarritz. I mean, it takes you on vacation when you hear those names. It's like, ah, uh, what about the bumper? Ah, uh, let's get it from that other car, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the worst car names ever fall into the category of the ETC, where you could say, okay, you made a bad decision, dumb, hit yourself. You don't have to kill yourself. I could kind of see where you're coming from. In the case of the AMC Gremlin, however, the only thing you can really say is, what the f man? What the f The name literally means a small gnome to be held accountable for malfunctioning equipment. That's the definition. I looked it up. There's no other definition. This name wasn't pulled out of a hat, people. A group of executives sat down and someone raised their stupid hand and said, how about we call it a gremlin? And everyone else said, sure, we're stupid people. We agree with your stupid name. Everyone in that room should be fired. The car was kind of a joke and the name was kind of a joke and I mean, the company was kind of a joke. We knew gremlins as things that made aircraft fall out of the sky. And we didn't really have a, a fix on our head exactly what a gremlin is, but we knew we didn't like it. It's like calling your car a glitch. Done. So I envisioned a bunch of AMC executives sitting around a boardroom table saying, is there a name that we could think of that connoted all sorts of problems that nobody could diagnose or find. And somebody said, yeah, Gremlin, Gremlin, let's call it the Gremlin. Yeah, that's a great idea. Nobody will buy this car. There's a lot of things to love about driving. There's a lot to hate too, like traffic, parking tickets, flat tires to name a few. You'd think then that naming a car the traffic jam or the donut spare would be a bad idea. But then again, isn't another name for getting a ticket a citation? What a stupid name for a car. I hope someone got fired. The citation. I mean, does citation have a different meaning that I don't know about? No, I think uh, Chevrolet was going for alliteration like Chevrolet Corvette. And citation is a fancy name for a speeding ticket, but uh, once somebody uh, pointed that out to you, you, you wanted nothing to do with it in your automobile. The funny thing about the Chevy Citation is that once you turn the air conditioner on, it wouldn't even go fast enough to get a citation. Most of the time, when you're naming a car, you want to give it something cool, something to make you feel good about driving in it. But when Suzuki rolled out with the Suzuki Esteem, I mean, you just thought, come on, really? I mean, how am I supposed to feel better about myself driving this thing? It looks like an esteeming pile of The Suzuki Esteem is so aptly named uh, because you have to have really high self-esteem to think you can get laid in that. In the home market, it was called the Cultus Crescent. That name is obviously not gonna work in America, but esteem didn't work either. There's no a way to help your esteem by buying a Suzuki of any sort. And the esteem was just kind of like, you know, they're not even trying, they've just given up. The only company that would ever put the name esteem on a car is a company that has none. Psychologists say that people advertise the thing that they're most defensive about. 
In Suzuki's case, you have a car with absolutely no self-esteem. The next car on the list is the Daihatsu Charade. I know that English may not be the first language of the execs of that company, but you think that this is another car or looking up the name in the dictionary might be a good idea. The name of the car means a ridiculous pretense. That's what they named their car. Sounds like stupid to me. Shahatsu Sheree, boy. I actually went to school with a girl named Ahatsu Sheree. She was a looker. <laughs> the Daihatsu Charade is a great name, but not as good as most other Daihatsu names. They once uh, named one of their concept cars the D-Bone, which I thought was pretty spectacular. Another was the Basket. The Daihatsu Charade was aptly named. It was purporting to be actual transportation. That name sounds weird, but it sounds great if it was a Tempora. The next car on the list is a beauty from the 1950s, and the name sounds like something that would come out of that time. But still, it makes you wonder what they were thinking when they named it. Hudson's Wasp Hollywood. I get it, the Hollywood part, probably because Hollywood was a cool place to be then, but the Wasp? Wasps are not awesome. They're little and angry. Now a buzzard, those are cool. But that would be a dumb car name too. That's a bad name, Wasp Hollywood. It sounds like a pimp's name, like in 81. Hey, I'm Wasp Hollywood, ladies. <laughs> yeah. The Hudson Wasp Hollywood actually replaced it, the Hudson Pacemaker. So it was an improvement. I mean, you talk about racial profiling. <laughs> I mean, that explains Hollywood, don't it? It's all white people. The Wasp Hollywood was almost as good as the Jew Crown Heights. The next car on our list is probably one of, if not the most obvious dumb name for a car. When Ford first thought of calling their latest model in 1989, the Probe, they apparently thought it would probe the wind. If there's one thing I learned about probes, it's that aliens made them for your butt. Ford Probe, what a pain in the ass. Obvious. The Ford Probe name followed a concept car. It was a study in aerodynamics, probing new frontiers of car design and had sort of a subtle space connection. They forgot that, you know, somebody in high school is going to have this car and they're going to get ridiculed. It's like, you ain't getting that car with Dan, are you? Why not? He drives a Probe. He's real handsy. The Ford Probe was originally supposed to be a replacement for the Mustang, and so I'm thinking they selected Ford Probe because Mustang 4 would have seemed like a direct-to-video sort of thing. Now it's time for the dumbest car name of all time. Even though this is the dumbest car name, there's a good chance you might have never even heard of this car. From 1927 to 1937, Studebaker put out a car called The Dictator. Now, for those of you that are into historical films like myself, Inglorious Bastards, Captain America, you'd know that this period in history was not the greatest time to be releasing a car called The Dictator. Come to think of it, I can't think of any time that's a good time to call your car the dictator. Where do they sell those cars? South America? North Korea? I mean, dictators drove 600 Mercedes. They didn't drive Studebakers. Come on. By 1937, that name was worn out, used up, and it had run its full life, so it was quietly dropped. Yeah, I'd drive the Studebaker dictator in a second. I'd wear my Mao hat. I'd put on a Castro beard. I wouldn't use any uh, turn signals or brake lights. I'd just drive down the street with two guns out the side of the windows, like, who wants a piece of this? There you have it, some of the dumbest car names ever. And I'm sure you have some more dumb car name suggestions for us, so leave them in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe to Car and & Driver and catch more episodes of The Rundown. Peace.